One is orange and sounds like a parrot. A carrot. Today, I'm going to recap a 2021 action fantasy film called Outside the Wire. The movie begins in the year 2036. A deadly civil war broke out in Ukraine, led by a criminal warlord called Viktor Koval against the pro-Russian separatist. The United States military was tasked as peacekeeping forces with both sides. Insurgents surprise a team of U.S. Marines and robotic warriors known as GUMPs when they are on their first deployment together. The team is attacked. The U.S. military continues to fight against the insurgents despite being vastly outnumbered. Still, they do so without considering that the GUMPs can also be easily eliminated. Meanwhile, at Creech Air Force Base, drone pilot Lt. Harp, better known as Rolling Thunder, has spotted an unknown vehicle heading in the direction of the U.S. Marines. Because he views it as a potential danger, Lt. Harp requests authorization to fire a missile. But Master Sergeant Miller, sometimes known as Rattlesnake, refuses to provide permission since two of his soldiers are still pinned down in the shootout. Miller is then informed by Harp that there are still 38 more men on his highest priority to protect. Instead, Harp requests that his drone partner, Bale, confirm the missile launch with Captain Bryden from Amber Base. Bale agrees to do so. Harp realizes after a detailed inspection that the vehicle is equipped with a rocket launcher. Harp disobeys the direct command given by Captain Brandon and launches a Hellfire missile from a drone attack at a suspected enemy launcher. Harp does this without giving the matter any second thought. After that, Harp's disobedience results in him being penalized and redeployed to Camp Nathaniel, a U.S. military base camp located in Ukraine. He has never personally served in a conflict zone before, thus this will be his first time doing so. He anticipates conversing with Captain Leo, who is his direct superior. However, Colonel Eckhart is there to greet him and remind him that if he survives the mission, he will be sent back to the Air Force. But if he dies, his story will serve as a warning to other pilots not to disobey and break the rules. However, if he survives the mission, he will be sent back to the Air Force. After that, he goes to a building where gumps are punished for their crimes. Finally, Harp is introduced to Captain Leo, who will serve as his supervisor at Camp Nathaniel. Leo reveals Harp's exceptional record in the military and exposes Harp's plan to marry his love, Olivia, in the near future. Harp's record is outstanding. Harp is immediately given a task by Captain Leo, who is ordered to assist the captain in delivering vaccines to a clinic with a cholera outbreak. After Harp has signed the non-disclosure agreement, Leo begins telling the story about Viktor Koval, who is believed to be responsible for a bomb that went off in Ukraine and resulted in the deaths of more than 25,000 people. He goes on to say that Viktor plans to get to the Sistema perimeter, where a Russian nuclear bomb is stored, and that we intend to use it to kill a significant number of people. As a consequence, Leo gives the pilot an additional mission, search for Viktor. Harp is taken aback when he discovers that Captain Leo is actually a highly developed and experimental android super soldier posing as a human officer. This secret is known only by Harp and the camp commander, Colonel Eckhart. Harp is the only person who is aware of this information. Just before they depart, the captain discloses that he specifically picked Harp because of his ability and intelligence, which gave him the potential to think in interesting ways. They leave using a military vehicle and are escorted by a U.S. Marine officer on their way to deliver the vaccine. Suddenly, Harp is confronted by Sergeant Miller and his men, who are punishing him for killing two of their soldiers in the past. However, this doesn't last long as the captain comes in, and they leave using a military vehicle. On the other hand, Harp displays a picture of his fiancé to his superior who reveals that the robot soldier retains part of the sense of humor programmed into him. Leo keeps on teasing Harp. When they come to an air truck delivering supplies for Ukrainian people that has been struck and is blocking the route, their journey is cut short and they must stop. The locals are upset with the military personnel, so they throw objects at them from the overturned truck. When one of them strikes a gump, it immediately fires a shot toward the one throwing it. After calming down the civilians and communicating with their leader, Leo is able to defuse the situation and prevent it from escalating further. 
Unfortunately, Victor's men ambush the U.S. Marines once more, and after that, they get into a gunfight with each other. The insurgents are also prepared for this, and they are able to dispatch the gumps quickly. As a result, Leo and Harp are forced to travel and deliver the vaccines on foot, while Miller and his soldiers must stay behind the rest of Victor's men while they are on their way. After arriving at the secure area, Leo explains to Harp that the Pentagon designed his appearance to look like that so that it would project an air of impartiality, attracting more individuals. They get to the refugee camp later and go straight to the clinic to give the vaccines to the doctor working inside. An assassin, surrounded by Victor, aims for Leo and Harp, but misses and wounds the doctor and nurse instead. The captain manages to shoot the sniper in the neck and interrogate him hoping to coerce him into revealing Victor's whereabouts. However, the sniper refuses to talk and is ultimately tortured by the locals. Harp criticizes Leo's choice to continue their expedition to find Victor without informing the base, but Leo explains that they don't have time to do that. As they drive, Leo says that there are times when his ability to act in violation of the rules is necessary. They eventually track down the resistance leader, Sophia, who gives Leo the highly secretive launch codes for the nearby nuclear missiles. They have reason to believe that Victor is pursuing the codes and must be stopped. To find the codes, Sophia instructs them to locate an arms dealer. Previous to their departure, she sells the men numerous firearms and says she'll use the proceeds to support a local orphanage. Sophia then leads them to the marketplace, where they meet Ashlak. His troops attack Leo, but the latter quickly wipes them out. The arms dealer makes a break for it, but Leo pursues and eventually catches him. It turns out that Oshlak was right about the bank being the location of the codes. They will get to the bank just as Sophia finishes down the disloyal guns dealer. To avoid being spotted by the Russians through his signal, the captain instructs Harp to remove the tracker from his body as soon as they reach the bank. Given their assumption that Victor is already inside the bank, they hurry inside. Leo orders Harp to contact the base camp. Then, while Harp tries to free the hostages, Leo starts shooting at Victor's men. A Russian gump emerges seconds later to attempt Leo's life. While Harp calls Eckhart for backup, he eliminates the killer robots and keeps looking for Victor and the code. Harp safely evacuates the hostages from the bank, but he doesn't understand why Colonel Eckhart dispatches gumps instead of regular soldiers. The Russians threatened to kill the hostages not long after they emerged from the bank. Then, a shootout breaks out after one of the Russians is shot by a U.S. gump. The surviving hostages are relocated to a safer location after Harp tries to protect them. When Harp calls the colonel back, he reveals that he's sending a drone with a missile to wipe out the entire facility. Leo sees a Russian man trying to escape on the opposite side, having stolen the codes. Despite being shot, the man is able to escape. Leo gave chase and was able to catch him and steal the code. This dude is not Victor, unfortunately. After returning to Harp, the missile is released, completely wiping out the financial institution. Colonel Eckhart now assumes that the missile has killed both Leo and Victor. They eventually regrouped and continued on their journey, though. While this is happening, Harp begins questioning Leo's true intentions and wonders what he is really up to. The captain then admits that he has been using the Android backup system to manipulate Harp all along, relieving himself of the requirement for human authority whenever the latter shows poor judgment. Harp can no longer issue orders to him as a result. After that, Leo meets with Victor personally to reveal that he and Victor have been working together all along. He knocks Harp out and leaves him by the side of the road, where Sophia's men pick him up. Leo tells Victor he has the codes and makes an attempt at negotiation. Leo has no choice but to assassinate Victor because he will not reveal the location of the nuclear missile's containment area. He wipes out all of Victor's troops and then impales Victor to death. He then learns of the spot and launches an instant assault on it. Sophia, on the other hand, spills the dirt to Harp regarding the United States' true goals with the peacekeeping mission. After some time, Sophia lets go of Harp and returns to the Citadel. After that, he tells Colonel Eckhart and Sergeant Miller everything he knows about Leo, including that he is alive and well and on his way to the missile location with the aid of their sworn enemy Victor. The higher-ups buy his story 
and Harp quickly calls Bale, his business partner, to ask for her help finding Leo. She does locate him, but he is in territorially contentious Russian borderlands, making it hard for the colonel to send reinforcements. Then, Harp promises to pursue the villain by himself. Before leaving, Miller arms him with a weapon that can be used to harm Leo. Bale provides him with the last known coordinates for Leo's whereabouts. While Leo prepares the device, Harp rushes to the silo where the nuclear weapon is stored, and Leo uses the code to attach it to the missile. Harp finally enters the room, but Leo sees him and promptly strangles him till he passes out. Leo keeps installing, and the final seconds tick away. The unconscious Harp comes to and coldly dispatches his captain with the provided weapon. Leo's body is destroyed as a result. The android's true intentions are revealed. He wants to attack the United States in order to destroy the artificial intelligence or cyborg program that built him. He has this in mind to stop the country from engaging in other disastrous battles fought by robot troops like Gumps. Harp then reports back to base camp and is given permission to start the bombing. The nuclear missile silo is destroyed, but Harp is able to escape and make it back to base. The movie ends with Lieutenant Harp being sent back to the Air Force by Colonel Eckhart, who commends him for his bravery and tells him he is a hero for his service here in the United States. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.